Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining Nikon Inspired Series. I'm super excited to be here with you. Uh, my name is Michelle Valberg, and I'm an Nikon ambassador for Canada. And it has been such a journey, and I am so excited to finally be able to talk about my test run with the pre-production Z9 camera that we've all been waiting for, this flagship camera that is just going to blow your mind. It certainly blew mine. So I had eight days, eight days. I chose four locations uh, it, with this game-changing technology. Keep in mind, I had no manual. I took thousands and thousands and thousands of frames, like crazy amount of uh, frames. And I was one happy photographer, and I know many of you will be happy as well with this new camera. So. I'm just going to take you through my locations and tell you about my experience and what I was able to photograph and how I was able to photograph the images that I did and what my favorite modes were and et cetera. So stay tuned and, and I look forward to sharing those stories with you. So my first location is Sherbet Lake. And as many of you know, I spent a lot of time uh, on my kayak in very early morning hours photographing uh, wildlife. and. When I was traveling up with this new camera, I put it on the seat next to me and I didn't really have much time to look through the entire menu. I had set it up. I was super excited to see the 3D tracking with the eye detection for animals. So I stuck that on and I put it in the seat next to me. So a lot of these photographs that you're going to be seeing uh, are taken with the 500 millimeter PF as well with the two times extender. So this was with the 500 driving down the road close to the cottage and I spotted deer. And, uh, you know, I just picked up my camera and I started shooting and, and of course I had my dog in the back of the, cam back of the truck and she started going oof, oof, oof. So the deer didn't like that very much either. And as it moved through the trees, it was amazing to see how locked on my 3D tracking was with the, with the animal eye detect. So I was super excited. I got to the lake and unfortunately it was, uh, it was inclement weather for me to go out. Um, so I just played around with it around the gardens, but the next morning at 4.30 in the morning, I descended into my kayak and I was super excited to explore what kind of animals and behavior that I was going to get with this new camera. I was ready for it and man, I wasn't disappointed at all. But, uh, you know, especially going out in early morning hours, year, you know, before the sunrise, um, that's often what uh, and where I start. So um, the, I paddled across to the other side of the island and the first thing I saw was a family of raccoons. And uh, the mom knows me and uh, is very comfortable with me. And she actually, when she sees me, she like da -da -da -da, talks to her kids. And then, um, you know, they scatter away for a few seconds and then they t she tells them, I swear, she tells them it's okay and they come back. Um, yeah, and a staggering, like I, I'm starting with a 500 millimeter. I had the two times extender on. Um, I really wanted to take the ISO for a drive. And this was that 16,000 ISO without any noise reduction. I mean, those are numbers that I never imagined saying. First of all, I was hand holding a 500 millimeter, add on a two times extender. So now I'm at a thousand millimeters. And then I'm shooting at one one sixtieth from my kayak of a moving subject, an animal, I'm defaulted to F11 and 16,000 ISO. Let's just say that 16,000 ISO. The quality, the clarity, unbelievable. I mean, this is just, again, part of the game changer. It's just another added, you know, increase in, in ISO capability from the previous versions. And I thought they were staggering. Now I'm really impressed and, and actually blown away by uh, the amount of ISO that you're able to get. I mean, this just opens the doors to so many different opportunities. And really, there's not a, a reason that we can't take photos anymore. <laughs> you know, you can't say you have too low light. Um, you know, you can really uh, get away with a lot, especially with that five camera in-stop stabilization. That increases your chances as well. And of course, if you have a moving subject, I mean, you know, shooting at 160th at, at, at you know, 1,000 millimeters isn't exactly ideal or, or um, something I would set out to do, but it doesn't mean that you can't shoot, and it, it's incredible. 
of course, through my journeys, you if you follow me on Instagram or if you watch my my shows, there's always the loons and I had a lot of loon drama in the lake this year. So um, I was a little hesitant and I wanted to kind of branch away from the loons a little bit, but I still managed to uh, to get a couple of really nice shots of of the um, uh, the one parent and the larger chick that we have in the other bay. Um, but I was, I was like, I want more. I, I want more from uh, the animals on the lake because it's just been an incredible year for opportunity and sightings. My first morning with this camera, I was on the kayak for four and a half hours. Let me just say when I got off of the kayak, well, my legs didn't move very well. Uh, it was an incredible morning. After the, after the raccoons, I saw an animal swimming in the water and and, uh, and again, you know, just the low light, um, you know, the longer lens, um, I like to stay at a distance. I don't like to interfere with the behavior of the animals. I don't want to, I don't want to change what they're doing, where they're going. I had never seen a muskrat get out of the water and start eating and, uh, you know, being in silent mode. And, and of course I've been shooting with mirrorless for the last three years. So um, it's something that I gravitated to right away because I feel like there is no interference. And I also don't find that the animals, um, you know, change their behavior because they're hearing the sound of the shutter. So uh, super important for me with the work that I do. And I know how enjoyable it is for others when they're not hearing the click, 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 click away. So this muskrat got out of the water and started eating right in front of me. And, and as I floated closer to him, because at that point I was just letting my kayak take me. Then he looked and he was like, whoa. So I didn't get a lot of shots, but what uh, what I did get, I was just blown away, especially again with the higher ISO, uh, the lower shutter speed in, in a moving subject, with a moving subject in the early morning hours. I had seen a, even an American bittern. I went into the bay and uh, something flew over my head and I went, what? And I knew it wasn't a heron and it was dark and then it landed and you know, these guys are pretty uh, skittish and I was able to stay nicely at a distance and I was so incredibly impressed. I didn't take the 3D tracking off um, for the entire morning. I was just so blown away with the capability of this new autofocus mode and the eye detect as well. I mean, this, this uh, bird went through the weeds and, and you know, went in and out of focus and consistently that camera stayed on focus on on the eye it was it was incredible as it moved it was it was mind blowing it was like a life changer so or a game changer i should say i guess it's a game changer is a life changer um so uh, then uh, as well i saw a bird that was like diving into the water it was white it wasn't a gull it was just like what is this and uh it was a caspian turn so it was like what all this magic happened on this first morning and you know it, it's not easy being a wildlife photographer and having eight days um you know you don't have a lot of time and you don't have a lot of opportunity if the weather is inclement which it was for a lot of it so i had this magical morning i was taking absolutely everything i could this tracking was incredible. I mean, black eye, black head, it was, it was tracking spot on and I followed it. And even like this bird was, this turn was like, you know, scratching its neck or I don't, I don't know. I'd never seen that kind of behavior before, but with the 20 frames a second that you're getting, you're just like opportunity after opportunity. I mean, if you can't take a good photo in focus of a moving subject with this camera, I'd say take up golf. <laughs> no. I mean, I just, I, I said right away to, to the folks that I was working with, I was like, what? This is incredible. If I can't get a good shot with this camera, I'm going to uh, go back to my golfing career, which wasn't much of a career. But um, anyway, this Caspian tour, turn and I, it was my focus to get it diving into the water and coming out with a fish. You know, eight days, I would move into one side of the bay, it would move to the other side of the bay, it would come back, I was over there. You know, so I just got a few incredible shots that I had never seen. I had never had a Caspian turn on our lake before. So I was super happy. And, and it, the way that that 3D tracked, it was it was incredible. This was, the, those three series were actually with the 500 millimeter with the two times extender as well. Hey, I had to put it in. I mean, you even get like all other things happening, uh, happening that you're not expecting or, you know, with 20 frames a second, you're just like, boom, 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 boom. You're catching all kinds of behavior, not necessarily award winning, but <laughs> I had to put it in there. So I was photographing these Eastern Kingbirds and I, I, they're on our lake, they're nesting on our property and I've been watching them. 
and I've been bound and determined to get their behavior. And they jump off of the tree and they fly into the water, they grab their insects and then they fly back. I mean, I don't even know how fast it is, but if you've seen a kingbird, they move like lightning fast. And I was thrilled to get this. I mean, these aren't exactly my award-winning shots, but to show the capability of auto focus tracking with 3D and eye detection and 20 frames a second at 45 megapixels, I mean, this is just absolutely insane capability that we're getting with the with the Z9, just insane. So I, I had to put them in just because it was, look at the detail too. I mean, the dynamic range and the detail and the clarity of this camera is just is mind blowing again. I don't know how many times I've said mind blowing, but I'll probably say mind blowing quite a bit or a game changer. So I had the 800 millimeter and I, I, I worked with the, with the humming birds as much as I could. You, know, you have to spread yourself out a little bit, right? Because you need as much opportunity. You need to take this camera through the, through the ropes. You know, you have to make sure that you're trying all the modes and, and everything else. Um, in a short period of time. So I uh, I waited and I mean, this this shot kind of blew my mind. I mean, it was late at night, it was 10,000 ISO. Again, no no noise reduction. I mean, really, it, it blows my mind, but the lighting as well is just like, it looks like a black and white with, with the, you know, the, the throat, the ruby throat, just red. I, I don't, I didn't do any retouching with this whatsoever. So kind of blows my blows my mind. Um, you know, taking your shutter speed up to, I don't know, 32 thousandth of a second. I mean, the stack sensor just means you're, you, there's no need for a mechanical shutter. If you want the sound of the boom, 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 or the click, 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 you can have it. But I mean, you're just firing off these shots. Now, with all that being said, you need a whole lot of memory. You know, I was going through 128 gigs quite quickly, um, especially with the video capabilities uh, of 8K and 4K. Uh, you know, you're you're using up a lot of memory. Two card slot, um, CF Express, fantastic opportunity to you know fill up both of those. But I found like as I was going, I was deleting more than I typically do, just because you could be following a bird and it goes out of frame and you're still taking a photo. Uh, so management of, of the files became an issue. That's why I said thousands and thousands and thousands of photos. I mean, I was trying everything. But look at this, 8,000 ISO, 8,000. It was crazy, crazy. So even my little yellow warblers, um, you know, small, small bird in the trees uh, with leaves, it locked on. Again, I was using 3D autofocus. <laughs> it was hard to get me off of that. Um, I did a couple of times, but really I was primarily on that mode. It was just absolutely stunning with the, with the, uh, with the results that I was getting. I mean, these are tiny little creatures and you have a little bit of branch or you know a lot going on in these images and uh, it was like bang on right on on that eye it kind of what blew my mind is that you had that 3d tracking box but then you had that secondary box that was tracking the eye within so you knew you were bang on with the eye and you knew that it was tracking the eye as well so you had this multi-level focusing system that was a little bit different um, that I found with the 7.2, but just the camera is that smart and is that capable, incredible. Even, you know, I was sitting there when, when it, this was a perfect example, you know, you're rushing and you're trying to get through what you have to get through. You, you know, you're on this deadline and you've got to produce and, and uh, you know, you're, you're, you're battling the weather and you're battling opportunity. You're like, okay, 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 settle down. And the fog rolled in and I just sat there in my kayak in the bay and then all of a sudden this Cooper's Hawk landed on the tree. And, you know, quick, it was there for like two seconds. It looked around and went off, but just, you know, fast, fast, fast focus. I just like positioned my camera. I used back button focusing and away we went. Like it was just locked right onto that, onto that bird. When there's lots of other activity going on with the trees and the branches and everything. Even for this baby robin, like I, I kept it in, obviously it's not one of my best, but as it moved through those branches, it was locking in on that eye. I'm telling you, like it's a complete game changer. See, I said it again, mind blowing opportunity. I mean, they, it's amazing that this camera is that smart that it can just follow this, uh, this animal along and, and you know, knows that that eye is, is what it needs to focus on. 
I took it even with this cat bird, this gray cat bird. I mean, there's no detail between or no contrast between the eyes and the and the head. It was locked right on to, to the eye. Same with this waxwing, cedar waxwing. This is right on our property. Super excited to have our waxwings nesting on our property. Again, haven't had that before. Um, but again, you know, the black on black and it was just locked right on. But look at the detail that you see in the wings. Same with my with my green hair, and I had a green hair and friend that I could find almost every day, and uh, and I just loved that his tuft was out, and you know, obviously you know it had no trouble finding the the yellow eye, but I was blown away again by by the detail that this camera is producing as well. Same with my osprey, you know, fluffing its feathers and giving me a little bit of a show. I have a great sequence of this flying off. Um, you know, it was just a, a wonderful opportunity to, to be able to capture 20 frames a second. But the other thing that you can do is, of course, dial it down. So you do not always you don't want 20 frames a second. I certainly don't anyway, but you can dial it down to 15, 12, 10, and even, even lower into single frames as well. So I think that is also a huge bonus with this camera is that you can really model it to whatever subject that you're photographing and leave it where you're comfortable at. You know, I go from the studio, I go to um, wildlife. So, you know, I have a couple of custom settings and, and I, I just alternate between and then when a situation rises that's a little bit different than another, then you just change it again. Like, uh, you know, we were at the eagle's nest and, and then the mom brought in some food for the, for the juveniles that were in the nest that we had just seen fledge, which was also exciting. This isn't all that same day, that same morning, by the way. <laughs> this is another day, but this eagle has a heron foot in its talons. So I, I was like looking at it, trying to figure out what was going on when I was photographing it. I just thought this was pretty incredible. I can't imagine that that's quite a meal for, for the juveniles because there was no meat left on it. But anyway, um, they were super excited and super excited enough that they flew around too. It was really neat to be able to see them, see them fledge. I was so grateful for this time. You know, I'm typically traveling so much that I come and go into the cottage life, into Sharva Lake. And this couple last well this year and last year i was able to watch and follow these animals and their behavior and their stories which was really really special so if you follow me on instagram you know i don't like frogs but i love this shot just because a the detail but two probably because it was hiding behind a lily pad and that's kind of what i'm doing behind my camera i'm like oh if i don't move he won't see me he won't jump in my kayak <laughs> i don't mind bears or anything else but i don't like frogs very much but I knew it was opportunity. And, uh, and of course, them being on the lily pads and quite low, I also took out the articulated screen and, and used that as well and positioned the camera a little bit lower to give it that a little bit more of that hero pose. So, you know, being able to use that articulated screen is useful in many situations, especially when you can't get down to the ground. And having those just a few more adjustments on the screen was also a, a real nice bonus as well with the Z9. So here's a little video of a few of the moments that I captured. Okay, so now we're going to location number two. I didn't spend much time. I had one night to photograph the Cormoran Island on a lake close to where I am in Charbet. And um, I, uh, it was super, super, super windy. However, it was very, very bright when we first got out there. And uh, again, just taking the different focus modes, I tried uh, the wide area small, which was 
typically what I would revolve, like we, um, that was my default uh, with the 7.2 and the 6.2. And, uh, and I, but I, again, I just, I kind of went back to the 3D tracking because um, the comrades uh, were flying in and it was windy. So they were kind of gliding and it just felt like with the contrast with the, with the sky, it was the right choice, but just to watch their behavior and the beautiful, beautiful light on them. A tricky situation, of course, the boat was moving tons, the birds were moving, there was so much behavior, um, but I just shot up the, the shutter speed, I went all the way up to 16 thousandths of a second, and uh, and just had a ball, you know, as the clarity, the, the contrast, the the dynamic range, the um, the tracking, everything. It was just, I was like in heaven, I was, I'm still in heaven, I just wish that I had it in my hands again because I miss it so much. I can't wait to uh, to purchase it and have it in my camera bag. That's for sure. So again, just watching behavior. The sun was starting to go down. The light was changing quite a bit, quite changing on on the birds. Um, trying to you know figure out some different behaviors, some in-flight shots. Absolutely not a problem. And then the sun started to go down and sadly, I mean, this is an incredible sunset shot, but, um, you know, with all the wildfires and the heat that we were having, um, this is what resulted. But as the sun started to set and the clouds were forming, I thought, okay, this is a great opportunity to, to try to capture a bird in front of the sunset within like I don't know, we had maybe three minutes before it went into the clouds. So I was able to find one cormorant that was uh, flying by and in the right position. So I'm quite happy with the result of, of, um, of this cormorant shot in the, in the sunset. It was just such a magical, a magical night and time. So many of you know me as a wildlife photographer, maybe you know me as a portrait photographer, Sport photographer, not so much. I used to be back in my older day or younger days, <laughs> a long time ago. Um, but I haven't done sports in a long time, except for I photographed my son water skiing. And uh, so I called a friend of mine who, as you can see, is an extraordinarily talented water skier and, um, and asked if I could photograph them water skiing. And I was uh, actually Antonio that I asked um, and Ken was his driver and then because I had such a limited amount of time, I asked if I could photograph Ken as well. So this is Ken and uh, he's a professional water skier and I took it to the max. You know, I, I wanted to make sure that I wasn't just with wildlife. I wanted to kind of break out of my mold. I wanted to kind of shake things up and get out of my comfort zone. I had no idea how difficult it was to photograph uh, water skiers in a, in a, in a race, like they were in a, 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 you know, a very short uh, distance and, and they were uh, in a, a, a race. It was unbelievable. Um, it was unbelievable. I was standing on the side and not only do they have to have the perfect performance, but you only have maybe like two seconds to fire off like three, three sets. So as they're going around the, um, the buoy, uh, you, they first of all, they have to nail it and not fall and and be at like this level. But uh, you had just a split second to to actually capture it. So I was really really happy with this. Obviously, I was shooting at uh, quite a fast shutter speed. The light was difficult. I didn't want it to be an easy shot, um, and I didn't get a ton of really great shots, especially because of the light. But I was really happy to take myself out of that comfort zone and really try something I hadn't worked at before. And and again, with the 20 frames a second, this I used the wide area small to focus, and I was quite happy with the results. Um, super, super cool. So after the water skiing and, and the wildlife, I thought, you know what, it's time to go and photograph uh, McKenna. And McKenna is a beautiful, beautiful young indigenous hoop dancer. And I had had McKenna in my studio. I had actually photographed her the first time for Planet Hope. She was working at a residence during COVID and she actually went and lived there because her mom was immune compromised. 
And that was her dedication. And to entertain them, she would do her hoop dancing. And then a video went viral and she became super uh, famous. And then I asked her if I could photograph for her. And uh, we became fast friends. And I just adore this young old soul. And uh, so when I had her back in the studio, this was before I had the Z9, I said, hey, listen, uh, I'm going to be having a, 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 a project come up and I'm wondering if I could photograph you outside of the studio. And, and you know, when she was in the studio, we had, you know, a background set up. But when she started working with her, I think, eight or ten hoops, you know, she she's about movement and she's about power and she's a force. and you know, uh, the hoop dancing is medicinal and it's the emotion that is created when she dances uh, that creates the medicine for us to heal our mind, body and soul. And she really has that energy. So I knew I had to be quiet. I knew I had to do this outside. I wanted to use a smoke machine. I wanted to be as quiet. I didn't want to cause any attention. I wanted her to be free to just be her. So I set up my backyard. I had a world renowned makeup artist come and help style. And I set up two lights. I had two stellar lights, one front and one back light. I had a black background, but I didn't use it very much. And I just allowed her to be. And as she started to move, um, we set off a smoke machine with uh, a couple of different colors. And it just, she just, oh, it was so magical watching her dance and to be free and the the eye the glance um I, for this i was using wide area small as well um and you know i wanted to see how the camera would react with the with the darkness with the movement with the um with the uh, the fog as well and i wanted to create uh, something that was magical and beautiful and dreamy but i also wanted to use that opportunity to really test the camera in these situations and um, and once we did a regalia, uh, we uh, p we uh, changed her into a uh, different outfit, a sports outfit, and then Leslie Ann put uh, feathers. And she braided feathers through her, her hair, which we took out of the braids, and she just she just started to magically move and um there was no control over this i didn't want to control her i knew i just wanted it to be and i think that really transformed um her in her dance and it just you know i took thousands of photos and you know i probably submitted way more photos than i should have um but it was hard to decide i mean she even had neon hoops i mean it was just uh, absolutely fantastic we had 40 degree weather we, it was so humid we had bugs we had all kinds of things going on i wanted to do video i i did do video but i wanted to create something a little bit more but i was you know the one woman show because i was i wasn't able to tell anyone that what i was doing or what i was shooting with so i had to do all of this on my own other than allow you know leslie ann to do her makeup and help me with the fog machine as well I, I think this camera is is transforming for all like it's a flagship camera, but I think that it is, you know, a camera for everyone. It's almost like the 6.2 and 7.2 together. You know, it, it really can model to whatever it is that you're photographing. And that's kind of what I wanted to do with this project and just not do wildlife, but take it to the ringer with the with the water skiing. I mean, sports photographers, you're going to go crazy with this. Um, anything fast moving. It's just it's so tack sharp and it's so quick and so accurate. It's, it's mind blowing. I knew I was going to say mind blowing again. So I hear it, I did a little video, I did 8K, 4K, I mean, it's 4K, 120. The switch off between the photo and the video is so easy and quick. I mean, unlimited buffer. Um, I don't know, There's, I, I can't even imagine what I would ask for more from, from this camera. I don't think that there is. It just, it keeps blowing my mind. <laughs> I said that on purpose. Um, anyway, so I'm going to end with my video and I want to thank you all for joining in. I look forward to more conversation about this um, Z9 and looking forward to hearing everybody else's rave reviews once we get it into our hands again. And uh, I, I just can't believe what we have in opportunity. I mean, never in my 
30 plus years would I have thought that we would be so far and advanced in technology and, and it's endless what we can all create. We're visual storytellers with endless opportunities with the technical side now. I mean, just enjoy and I look forward to speaking more and hearing more and uh, being a part of this new movement. And thank you for joining in. And thanks to Nikon for this incredible opportunity for me to uh, to show uh, and to try out this pre-production camera that I can't wait to have on my camera bag again. It's mind blowing. Here's a video that I would like to share with you all. So stay tuned and uh, back, back, uh, looking forward to talking again. Thanks. Whoa.